In this Warframe guide, I will give you the best 10 Warframes getting into 2023. We're going to talk about what they can do, what makes them so good, where and how to farm them, and of course, what to look out for when playing with them. Also, because this is probably my last video for this year, I'll host a little platinum giveaway. More on that later. Just a quick disclaimer, this is my personal top 10 list. You're free to disagree and if you think I missed a frame that should have definitely be mentioned on this list, then let us know in the comments down below so we can all benefit from your expertise. And with that being said, let's jump right into it. The first frame on our list is Mesa. Just like Jesse McCree says, it's high noon somewhere in the world. Just that for this lady, high noon is everywhere and 24-7. Mesa is amazing because she can not only clear entire rooms of enemies effortlessly, she'll also do all the aiming for you. Not too shabby for a shooter game if you ask me. But it doesn't stop there. While she's certainly a force to be reckoned with in the DPS department, she's also the exact opposite of a glass cannon at the same time, being able to face tank whole army depots worth of ammunition. With her third skill Shatter Shield, she can deflect up to 95% of incoming projectile damage and that's on top of protection through armor and other mods like Adaptation, making her one of the few frames in the game to have three different layers of damage reduction. Definitely Steel Path material here, my friends. Also, her second skill is a neat little damage buff for her and her team, so all in all, a very nice kit. As to how to mod her, I personally like to play her with enough ability strength to reach 95% on her 3, but not more. The rest will go into efficiency and duration to make her peacemakers more affordable. While duration greatly reduces the energy consumption per second, I'd still advise to mix in quite some efficiency as well to make the initial cast cheaper. This way you can switch your peacemakers on and off pretty much as you please, giving you more flexibility in combat and making her augment, which lets you move around while in peacemaker mode, obsolete. To get your trigger happy fingers onto Mesa, you're gonna buy the main blueprint from the market and then acquire her component blueprints from Mutalist Allot V on Eris. Oh, and by the way, if you'd like me to make a dedicated video on any of today's frames showcasing their different build options and playstyles, let me know in the comments down below so I can put it on the list for 2023. Moving on to number 2, which is Protea. Protea? Protea? I don't know. Anyway, another powerful lady in the mix, but in contrast to Mesa, even more endgame viable. Let me elaborate. Mesa is straightforward, very tanky and strong in her damage output, perfect for almost every player out there. When it comes to true endgame endurance content, however, and we're talking about enemy levels in the thousands here, Mesa's tankiness and damage unfortunately can't keep up. And that's exactly where Protea comes in. Protea takes the very popular shield gating method for survivability and cranks it up to 11. If you want to learn more about shield gating, feel free to check out my survival guide after this video. Just in short, whenever you have at least one shield point left, you cannot die in one hit no matter how much damage you take. Combine that with our first ability which can constantly restore your shields and you got yourselves a nice dose of infinite immortality. Just watch out for those nasty toxin clouds since toxin, as you all know, bypasses shields and can kill you anyway. As for the damage output, Protea's Blaze Artillery is one of the deadliest Warframe abilities, not only in low, but especially in very high level content. Reason for this is that the turrets increase in damage the longer they shoot, meaning they keep increasing in damage until they're strong enough to crack whatever is in front of them. Add to that the fact that Protea's dispensary keeps you afloat forever when it comes to energy and you have yourselves a very solid option for long endurance gameplay. When it comes to modding, I recommend prioritizing duration since it'll increase the uptime of your artillery, giving it the necessary time to crazily ramp up in damage. However, range should also be there and finally, put a bit into strength too. Archon Vitality is your best friend to maximize your turret's damage output and either Natural Talent or some yellow Archon shards should be used to increase your cast speed so you can refresh your shield drones faster. To get Protea, you gotta finish the Deadlock Protocol quest for the main blueprint and then her components can be dropped from the Granum Void. Oh and by the way, if you like Protea's playstyle, then Zaku might also be a Warframe you wanna look into. Also very good scaling with enemy levels and survivable if you abuse shield gating. Next, Necros. As you know, Warframe is a looter shooter, so you're gonna do a whole lot of looting and shooting. Shocker, I know, right? 
so a frame that makes enemies drop more loot naturally has to be one of the best in the game, and that's exactly where Necros comes into play. Necro's third skill, Desecrate, gives you a 54% chance that dead enemies drop loot again. This mechanic is unique in the game. While there are other ways to increase enemy drop chance, only Necros can re-roll the loot dice. The reason this is so good is that there are certain drops in the game that are guaranteed, like for example Oxium from Corpus Oxium Ospreys, so a drop chance increase wouldn't do anything here. However, a real loot can drop your second pile of Oxium, and that's just one example. But if you think Necros is just a handy farming tool, then you're mistaken. With his fourth skill, he can bring dead enemies back to life to fight on his side. And while the only thing these guys can kill is your frame rate if you're running the game on an older system, with the Augment Shield of Shadows, Necros can redirect 90% of his damage taken onto these summons. Just like Mesa, this makes him extremely survivable, giving him a third layer of damage reduction too. And as if that's not enough, his second skill, Terrify, is a great crowd control that can strip enemies of their entire armor at the same time. With his looting ability, you'll have a whole lot of health orbs all around, which makes him a perfect fit for health conversion, add enough strength to get his Terrify up to 100% armor strip and his Shield of Shadows to 90% damage reduction, and some range for looting, and you got yourselves a very tanky, crowd-controlling resource farmer. I personally like to play him as a melee frame, getting up close and personal to the enemies, hacking them into pieces, sniking the loot and then bring them back to life as my damage absorbing guinea pigs. 9 out of 10 Grenier hate this trick and 9 out of 10 Tenno give the bit a like so it can spread to more people. But jokes aside for a moment, I actually checked it in my channel analytics, likes do have a measurable impact on video performance, so honestly, thank you so much for the support, it really means a lot. Oh, uh, yeah, of course, Necro's main blueprint can be bought in the market as well, and his components drop from Lefantis on Deimos. Moving on to one of the best, if not the best, overall Warframe in the entire game. We all know him, we all love him, and no top 10 list would be complete without him, the one and only Revenant. Revenant is considered the most immortal Warframe out of all. His Mesmer skin absorbs a certain number of hits regardless of their damage, enabling him to literally take a nap while being shot at by dozens of level 10,000 enemies. And if the skill runs out, you just recast it, rinse and repeat. But it's not just his survivability that makes him one of the best Warframes ever. With his third skill, he's also able to effortlessly drop every enemy in just a split second regardless of their levels, since he does damage relative to the enemy's maximum health. By the way, if you want to see that certain build in action, feel free to check out my Revenant guide up in the info card in the corner. But Revenant is not only crazy good against level cap enemies. In the lower level range, and by lower I mean up till Steel Path level 150, he can also mass murder entire rooms with his fourth ability, Dons Macabre. I think it's supposed to be French, so I hope I didn't butcher it this time. A tank, a damage dealer, and with a decent helmet choice, also a crowd controller. Revenant must be Stacy's mom, cause he truly got it going on. As for modding, I prefer a strength heavy build, giving him more damage on my three and more free hits on my Mesmer skin. But if you want to have some more crowd control via helmet, some range will also never hurt. To get him, complete the Mask of the Revenant quest in Cetus and then get his component blueprints from the various bounties there. Alright, before we go on, let's quickly talk about the giveaway. With the help of the generous team at Digital Extremes, I'm able to bless 4 Lucky Tenno with 75 Platinum each. All you gotta do is leave a comment saying hashtag plat and leave your in-game name as well as the platform you're playing on. I will then go and determine the winners at the end of the year. Platinum should be distributed sometime in January then, and I already wish you and your loved ones a great holiday season and a happy 2023. Let's go on. Fifth, Zephyr. Absolute monster. I used to hate this frame back in the day, but oh boy am I sorry for not having tried her after the rework. Do you want to be immune to all projectiles? Do you want to kill everything while in turn everything can't do anything against you? Well, if you answered yes to both of these questions, then you're in for a ride. More crit chance while in the air? Nice. Zephyr's 3, immunity to all projectiles? Yes. Her 2, groups up enemies? Cool. 
and her four puts all these enemies up into a tornado and if you shoot the tornado, that damage and all the status effects will be distributed among all the enemies in the tornado. This is so freaking busted. Now, take a heat weapon, slap on Archon Vitality, and for level cap enemies, maybe you want to infuse Necro's Terrify on her 1 to Armor Strip. That's it, have fun. For the modding, range, duration, and if you're going for Armor Strip, enough strength to get that up to 100%. Also, if you have space left over, slap on whatever you have to optimize your energy economy. All of Zephyr's blueprints are acquired from the Tenno Lab in your clan's dojo, and while I personally find it a bit confusing that she has a lower gravity than all the other Warframes in the game, I could not recommend playing her more. Next on our list is the spiky cat lady Korra. Korra is an amazing crowd control damage dealer. If you like big red crits killing entire rooms of enemies, then she is exactly what you need. Her second skill in Snare is great for pulling together groups of enemies in one spot, and her fourth, the Strangle Dome, is a huge dome of chains that catches enemies like a spider web, which stretches over an entire room if you have enough ability range. So crowd control can definitely be considered taken care of. The damage part is where her first skill Whip Claw comes into play. If you throw this at your Strangle Dome, its damage will be applied to all enemies caught in it and this Whip Claw can deal disgusting amounts of damage. In order to deal the numbers that you're seeing here in the background, you'll have to equip Korra with a so-called Stat Stick. Whenever a Warframe has an ability that works like a weapon, the stats of said weapons can be modified by the mods that you put on a corresponding weapon in your loadout. For example, Korra's Whip Claw is considered a melee, so most mods that you put onto your regular melee weapon like damage, crit chance and so on will also be applied to Korra's Whip Claw. For more precise information on what mods work with which skill and everything, I strongly recommend looking into the wiki or visiting the Kenjineer who already has a great video explaining all this in detail. But back to Korra, if you want to get the most out of her, then range and duration are the stats to focus on. For survivability in the high levels, you'll have to go into shield gating and you also want to look into her energy economy because Korra is quite hungry when it comes to that. However, if you manage to take care of all that, you're gonna have yourselves a beast of a Warframe right here. To get her, simply play Sanctuary Onslaught to get her main and all the component blueprints. Before we get into our next frame, in case you've enjoyed the video so far and don't want to miss out on helpful Warframe content in the future, maybe consider leaving the channel a sub. I promise you, there's a lot to come in 2023. Welcome to the community and let's go on. Number 7 is Wisp. I personally don't play her all that much, so I'm gonna keep this one short. However, that does not mean that she's weak by any stretch of imagination. Wisp's passive makes her invisible as long as she's in the air. That's nice, because if enemy can't see you, enemy can't hurt you. Next, she has three buffs that she can cast for herself and her team, making them faster, deal electric damage to nearby enemies and heal crazy amounts of health permanently. Nice. And of course, her ability Breach Surge blinding enemies, making them more susceptible to your damage, should not be forgotten either. Infuse some nice crowd control onto her via Helminth, give it some decent range and make sure to stay in the air as long as you can, bounce around like a crazy little bunny and there you go. Her main and component blueprints are acquired from the Ropa Lawless assassination on Jupiter, for which unfortunately however, you'll have to finish the whole main story first. I'm actually surprised I managed to say Ropa Lawless first try. Nice. At number 8, we have the answer to the question, who's your favorite grey pony? Uh, of course, it's Octavia. Remember how I said one could argue that Revenant is the overall best frame in the game? Yeah, Octavia is the only reason one would ever even question Revenant being number 1. Because she is so incredibly busted that I still cannot wrap my head around how anyone could have possibly thought, yes, she's balanced, we can put her in the game like this. Let me show you why. First, she can be constantly invisible without any effort and that also counts for her entire team, so no chance any one of you will ever die. Second, her resonator triggers every enemy's aggro in a huge range, effectively distracting them from doing anything that would even be remotely dangerous to you. And as if that's not enough, her mallet deals scaling damage to all enemies in this huge range. What that means is, no matter if the enemy is level 10 or 10,000, 
the entire room will die in just a few seconds. Oh, and have I mentioned that you can get all this performance out of her with just a few standard mods? Yeah, that's right, no crazy expensive prime mods, archon shards or arcanes required. Literally every AFK game is more interactive than playing Octavia at level cap. But to be fair, I'm also happy that we have a frame like this. Thinking about players who've never played a shooter in their life, or quite literally have special needs, frames like Octavia enable these Tenno to experience this beautiful game together with us while even being a helpful addition to the team. And if you ask me, that's freaking wholesome. To get Octavia, you gotta finish the quest Octavia's Anthem for her main blueprint, the chassis blueprint is rewarded from the music puzzle on Lua, the new Roptics blueprint is gained from Rotation C in the mission Terrorem on Deimos, and the system blueprint can be found in the A rotation cache of Play-Doh on Lua. Or in short, just crack some relics and get her Prime, it's 10 times faster. Also, right now, Octavia Prime is available as Twitch Prime Drop. So if you have that, just link your Twitch account with your Warframe account and you got her. Number 9 on our list is Vault. Vault has a huge fan base, and I can totally see why. Vault is one of the most versatile Warframes in the entire game. No matter if you want to speedrun a quick capture mission, hunt Eidolons or farm Focus, Vault can somehow do it all. With his second ability, he speeds up himself and nearby allies. And that means not only the movement, but also melee attack and reload speed. His 3 sets up an enemy shield that not only blocks all incoming projectiles, but also increases your damage and crit chance when shooting through it. Oh, and did I mention you can also just pick it up and carry it around? And finally, his 4 stuns entire rooms full of enemies while dealing enough damage to at least clear everything as well in normal star chart territory. Vault can be modded in so many different ways and offers so many unique playstyles that it would be impossible for me to simply recommend you one straight build. As I said in the beginning of the video, if you want me to make a dedicated video on any of today's frames, make sure to let me know in the comments down below so I can put it on the list for 2023. As for how you'll get him, his main and component blueprints are all available in the Tenno Lab in your clan's dojo. And last, but definitely not least, we have our lovely CC girl Nova. To be fair, originally I wanted to say Gauss, that's also why he's in the thumbnail by the way, though given how many super crazy survivable damage dealers we've already had on our list today, I thought I'd rather finish with a more utility focused frame. However, that does not mean that Nova is weak whatsoever. Nova is one of the best, if not the best, crowd control frame in the entire game, and that is mainly because of her fourth ability, which can stretch over entire rooms and, depending on your power strength, will either drastically slow down or speed up all enemies. Great when facing difficult foes, as well as when you'd simply want to be done faster with a defense mission. Her first ability gives you up to 90% damage reduction, which, as we also saw for Mesa and Necros earlier, is crazy good for surviving higher level enemies. And when it comes to modding, you want to have a whole lot of duration since it'll boost the radius of her ultimate. Depending on whether you want to go Slova or Speedva, you either want to opt for high or very low power strength, and all the rest is basically up to your personal preference. I know there are some really crazy helmet combinations that synergize well with her kit, but that would also be something for a dedicated build guide. Getting her is gladly quite easy, simply buy her main blueprint from the market and get her components in the raptor fight on Europa. In case you're now looking for the best weapons to pair these super powerful warframes with, check out this video. We see each other in 2023. Until then, happy holidays and as always, good loot.